I'm going to turn to the crisis in Afghanistan. Overnight, multiple rockets were fired on Kabul airport in a new attack ahead of tomorrow's deadline for the withdrawal of all U.S. troops. Ian Panel joins us from Doha, Qatar, with the latest. Good morning, Ian. Yeah, good morning, George. This latest attack and the attacks before that just underscore quite how dangerous and difficult this mission is. And as the clock ticks down, so those risks continue to increase. And for Americans and our Afghan allies who are stuck, stuck outside the base, well, they know time is now running out. Overnight, as many as five rockets fired towards U.S. troops at Kabul airport, the U.S. military launching an anti-projectile defense system. But officials saying it's unclear if any of the rockets were intercepted. There are no reports of casualties and the airport remains operational. With America's longest war almost over and all troops set to leave, the final few hours remain the most dangerous. The urgency to evacuate greater than ever. Only 50 American citizens able to get out in a 24-hour period over the weekend. At least 250 who say they want to leave still remain. This is the most dangerous time in an already extraordinarily dangerous mission these last couple of days. And so we will do everything possible to keep, uh, to keep people safe, but the risk is very high. Despite warnings another terrorist attack could be imminent, hundreds of Afghans still crowding the gates to the airport. Pawana, who worked for the US and has SIV status, was told to go to the airport almost two weeks ago, but can't get through. She says she feels as if she's been abandoned and left for dead. Our life are destroyed. Our future are destroyed. We have no jobs, no future in here. Earlier Sunday, less than five miles from the airport, an unmanned American drone striking a vehicle, eliminating an imminent ISIS-K threat. The vehicle believed to be carrying a substantial amount of explosive material that caused powerful subsequent explosions. An Afghan official telling ABC News six civilians were killed four of them children in that U.S. strike. This came just a day after another U.S. drone strike in Nangarhar province reportedly took out two high-level ISIS-K members. U.S. officials characterizing it as counter-terrorism and retaliation for the Kabul airport bombing that killed 13 U.S. service members. On Sunday, the president and first lady watching the flag-draped coffins of the fallen returning home to U.S. soil. Well, we heard from Parwana overnight. She tried to get through. She got a call from the U.S. Embassy saying, make your way to the traffic circle right outside the airport. She went down there. She and her brother were stopped by the Taliban. They wanted to see their papers. They wanted to know what they'd done with the Americans. And, of course, they've had to retreat back home. So many of our allies now feeling abandoned and afraid. George. Just a horrible situation. Okay, Ian, thanks. Let's bring in our chief global affairs anchor, Martha Raditz. For more on this, Martha, the deadline approaching fast. These last few hours are critical. They sure are, George. The priority right now is protecting U.S. forces in Kabul as those final military flights evacuate American citizens, Afghan allies, and, of course, the service members themselves. There has been detailed intelligence about the threats there at the airport in these last few days, which no doubt saved lives. At least one of those planned attacks, as Ian talked about, aimed at the airport, thwarted by the drone strike on that suspected suicide car bomb yesterday. But this emphasis on so-called Force protection does seem to be limiting the number of evacuees getting onto the airport grounds. These unofficial groups trying to rescue Americans and Afghans say many have been unable to get into the airport, even those flashing American passports. The U.S. ambassador in Kabul denies that. But the latest ABC Ipsos poll shows that a huge majority of Americans here at home wish the U.S. would stay to help them. 84 percent say they think U.S. troops should stay until all Americans are evacuated. 71 percent believe we should stay until Afghan allies are evacuated as well. The same poll showing 59 percent disapprove of the way President Biden has handled this. But despite that, George, he is not extending the withdrawal date. George. OK, Martha, thanks. And as the deadline to evacuate draws closer, we want to honor those who sacrificed. The image of the 13 U.S. service members killed in that horrific suicide bombing at the airport returned home on Sunday. The caskets arrayed in the hole of a C-17. President Biden and the First Lady were there for the dignified transfer. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.